So, it's a new year, and hopefully we're going to start it off strong by covering a series I've not featured on the channel so far. But you've read the title, you know what we're doing, let's get started. Hello everybody and welcome to the Science Of, where today we're going to be taking a look at the science behind Sonic the Hedgehog. But rather than looking at how fast Sonic the Hedgehog is, like so, so many YouTubers have done in the past, what I'm going to do instead is take a look at the huge roster of Sonic characters and look at how similar they are to the animals they're based on. Since Sonic's introduction in 1991, we've seen Sonic's group of friends grow exponentially, with new anthropomorphic characters introduced with each new game. And given that there are so many, there's no easy way to categorise them. To make things a bit easier, Today, we're only going to be looking at the characters introduced in the earliest 16 to 32 bit Sonic games Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and Knuckles Chaotix. Let's start by taking a look at the copious number of hedgehogs from all Sonic games, as there's not really any significant difference in their abilities. There are as many as 17 species of hedgehog, ranging from the smallest, the long eared hedgehog found in the Middle East, to the largest European hedgehogs. We've got plenty of comparisons for our blue, pink, black and silver blurs. But which of Sonic's abilities will we be looking at? Well a lot of things such as his blue colour, in your face attitude and bright red footwear can be put up to artistic liberties. So what we'll be looking at are his super speed, his ability to curl up into a ball and roll seen in his spin attack and his inability to swim. But before we can look at these we have to establish what kind of hedgehog Sonic could be. There are a couple of things which categorise Sonic's hedgehogs. Prominent pointed ears, two-tone colouring, large spines on his back, and a long black nose. This surprisingly narrows down our list of hedgehogs from 17 down to 2. The Armour Hedgehog from China, and a four-toed hedgehog found in Central and Eastern Africa. So we have a couple of possible Sonics. But how do these real hedgehogs compare to Sonic and Friends? Let's take a look at speed first. Sonic can run at roughly the speed of sound, or 767 miles per hour. Real hedgehogs, of course, can't run anywhere near that kind of speed, with most hedgehogs scurrying around at around 4 to 5 miles per hour. But four toed hedgehogs have been observed to be pretty quick, managing speed bursts of up to 9.9 .9 miles per hour. As for Sonic's other abilities, well, hedgehogs are well known for rolling up into a ball using their many back muscles to spread out their quills. And they do this for multiple reasons. But surprisingly, when it comes to prey, that's not actually their first reaction. They'll more often than not attempt to flee, rather than curl up when predators are close. They've also seen to curl up when they fall from heights. Hedgehogs, whilst very adept climbers, aren't as good at climbing back down. So what they'll often do is curl up into a ball and drop, using the spines to cushion their falls. Some reports say that they're even able to fall as far as 20 feet. But what about Sonic's inability to swim? Well, hedgehogs are actually known for being quite proficient swimmers, being able to swim as far as 2 kilometers or 1.2 miles overnight in search of food. So, all in all, all of the hedgehogs in the Sonic games are pretty inaccurate as far as zoology is concerned. But what about the rest of Team Sonic? Well, let's start by looking at the perpetual player 2 Miles Tails per hour. Tails has all of the abilities that Sonic has, except he can also fly by use of his twin tails. Of course, this is no way near zoologically accurate, but what about his general design, a yellow fox with a white tail tip? There are 37 species of fox to look through, but out of those 37, only 12 of them could be considered foxes under the genus Vulpus. So all we need to do is look for those with a lighter two-tone tail and fluffier coats with white patches. The closest we can find to that design is the Red Fox, whose cubs can be found with a white tail tip. But a very close second would be the Fennec Fox of the Sahara Desert, which have a lighter coat. But their cubs actually have a dark tip to their tails and their ears are a bit too big to be Tails the Fox. So now we're on to the final member of Team Sonic. Knuckles is an echidna who was first introduced in 1994's Sonic 3 and was first made playable in the add-on Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Knuckles' abilities in his first appearance are just like Sonic's, except he's also to glide and used clawed Knuckles to climb walls. 
and in Sonic Adventure 2, he also gained the ability to dig using the drill claws. Echidnas are found in Australia and look very similar to hedgehogs, with large spines all across their backs and much longer snouts. This long snout actually links back to Knuckles' appearance in Sonic Adventure 2, where Knuckles would be able to sense a piece of the Master Chaos Emerald when near. The drill claws introduced in this game are also rather accurate to real Echidna. Although they don't drill into the ground, they do tend to make their burrows underground and dig to find ants and termites to eat. As for the climbing seen in the original Sonic games, well, Echidnas are fairly proficient climbers, able to climb as far as 2 meters. The only aspect of Knuckles which isn't scientifically accurate is his ability to glide, and to be honest, I'm still not entirely sure how he's meant to glide throughout the series. So rather unsurprisingly, Team Sonic has bits spot on, but most of it is just pure fiction zoologically. But of course, besides Team Sonic, there are many more characters which were introduced with this first wave of games. Between the original Sonic trilogy and Knuckles Chaotix, there was also a game which introduced a character called Sonic Triple Trouble. Sonic Triple Trouble was released for the Sega Game Gear and introduced Fang the Sniper, a weasel who acted like a secondary antagonist with Eggman, but unfortunately, his appearances were limited to Triple Trouble and a short stint in Sonic Fighters, with his last appearance appearing as a boss fight in Sonic Mania, so there's not really enough to go on for any proper analysis. Even the official Sonic website wasn't sure what Knack was, describing him as a wolf-weasel hybrid. So honestly, I really don't know what there is to say about him, so let's just move on to the Chaotix. Knuckles Chaotix was released in 1995 as a Sonic spin-off, with gameplay featuring Knuckles tethered to one of four members of Team Chaotix, made up of Mighty the Armadillo, Vector the Crocodile, Espio the Chameleon, and Charmy B, with the last three coming back in 2006's Sonic Heroes to form a new Team Chaotix. When compared to Team Sonic, the Chaotix is surprisingly more zoologically accurate, with Espio being possibly the most accurate. In Sonic Heroes, he acted as the speed character for Team Chaotix, and he had the ability to turn invisible through an ability called Stealth Agility. The Chameleon is able to change colour due to two superposed thick layers of Iridophore cells. These Iridophore cells contain many nanocrystals of varying size, shape and organisations. The Chameleon can change the structural arrangement of these cells by relaxing or exciting the skin. This moves the nanocrystals to either bring them closer together or to spread them out. In a relaxed state, the crystals are closer together, leading to shorter wavelengths of light being reflected. When the cell's skin becomes excited, this distance increases and the iridophore cells reflect longer wavelengths of light. They're able to do this for each cell independently, and this allows them to mix wavelengths to make all manner of colours. As for the other members of the Chaotix, any zoological references are a bit simpler. Charmy Bee is a bee, and that might be one of the most redundant things I'll ever say. But besides that, there's not actually much to talk about. He can fly, like bees do. The only other significant ability he has is in Sonic Heroes, where Charmy can cause warp flowers to bloom. Although this may just be a reference to bees and pollen, it's surprisingly a real ability that bees have. When pollen is scarce, Bees have been observed to be biting leaves of plants, which causes them to flower at least a month before they would normally bloom. It's not certain what causes this to happen, but some theories suggest that bee saliva contains certain chemicals which causes plants to flower early. So there we go, if that's all there is for Charmy Bee, you just know that Vector's gonna have so many accuracies. Well, not really. From what I can see, Vector's main ability seems to be his strength. This isn't a bad choice for Vector, as crocodiles are known for being pretty strong. But the thing is, the focus of that strength is in their jaws, not their arms or legs. They can only run up to 11 miles per hour, whereas, thanks to their strong tails, they can swim up to speeds of 20 miles per hour. But even then, that's not their strongest feature. The strongest crocodile, the saltwater crocodile, can slam their jaws with 16,460 newtons of biting force. Four times stronger than the biting force of a lion. We never really see Vector use his jaw in the game. The most we get is in Sonic Heroes, where Vector blows a gum balloon to help the Chaotix reach higher areas of levels. 
Okay, so pretty unrealistic. But what about the final Chaotix? Mighty. Well, he's the Chaotix with the least representation, only appearing in Nuttles Chaotix and then most recently in Sonic Mania Plus. Mighty is an armadillo, but unlike the other characters so far, it's pretty easy to identify which species of armadillo Mighty belongs to. Mighty's distinct coloration means that he could only really be the nine-banded armadillo. This species is the most widespread species out of all of them, being found all throughout America. Although armadillos are thought of as rolling into balls, only one species, the three-banded armadillo, is able to roll up into a hard ball to protect from predators. The only bonus that Mighty has over Sonic is that he's immune to physical harm and won't take damage from spikes, which is similar to that of an armadillo who do have a very strong protective cell made out of ossified or bone-like dermal scoots, bone deposits in the skin which grow to form plates called osteoderms, which are then covered in a layer of creatine, the same stuff that makes up your nails. These plates are very loosely connected, meaning that they're very flexible. The only downside is that the armadillo has no protection on its underbelly, making it a prime target for predators, or in the Sonic games, ideally, spikes. All in all, Mighty works really well as a generic interpretation of an armadillo, rather than any specific type, like all the characters we've looked at in this video. So there we go. All in all, a lot of the similarities between Sonic characters and their real-world counterparts are superficial, but some of them are a bit more significant. It's definitely not perfect, but it's a lot more accurate than I expected from a game with robots piloted by bunnies and birds. All that remains is to see if Sonic Team did a better job as we move into the 3D games in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if you have any scientific subject or topic that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please tell me in the comments down below. Or if you'd rather, send me a message directly on Twitter. If you're looking for more game-based content, then you can join me on twitch.tv slash togglejam, where I stream three times a week. Always a good time, and I love interacting with the community. If you want to support the channel even further, then you can go and contribute to my Patreon. As a patron, you'll get behind the scenes access to the creation of all aspects of these videos, including script writing, editing, thumbnail design, and all the assets I make for the show, as well as being able to vote on what the next Science of Video will be. But until then, this has been the Science of Sonic the Hedgehog. I'll see you next time.